actually got the first slide up, but um, let, let's let's jump right into this. There we go. All right, guys. So, so um, I'm going to introduce you uh, to our sales team. At the end of the day, they're a very important bunch of people. They're the people that will be um, on the phones, manning emails, and also in your offices, helping you understand and promote this, these products. Um, as you know, we've got sales teams in Johannesburg, Cape Town, and in Natal. Uh, so we'll, we'll introduce you to them. Uh, after that, we'll go through the uh, Cube 12 volt technical video. Um, and then uh, we'll do um, an overview of the products and the key uh, features. And at the end, um, if you don't mind, save your questions till the end. Uh, you can ask questions by typing in on the screen. Um, and, and Katie, who's, who's running this in the background, has kindly uh, given me five of these uh, Revo uh, batteries. Uh, these are little solar powered devices, which are ideal for charging your cell phone. Um, they work as in the light um, and, and uh, yeah, they're really handy devices if you're on the road and you need to charge any devices through a USB, um, they, they're great. So, so we've got that on offer to five lucky winners who've got um, uh, five very good questions. So I can encourage you to ask really great questions and we'll answer those for you today. Okay, Katie, let's let's move on to the next slide. All right, this is the sales team. I think some of you, uh, well, definitely, I think you've all met met uh, some of us or all of us, uh, whether during COVID times it's been through videos like this or in face-to-face -face interactions, either at your offices, at our offices, or sometimes at your clients' premises. We're always there to help. Um, top left is obviously myself, Jonathan Snow, sometimes just called John because it's easier. Uh, Charlie Mullen, uh, who's, who's always uh, running around like crazy. Uh, she's another Gauteng uh, sales representative. Um, Mr. Biggs, as we like to call him in the office, big man, big sales and big personality. Sorrel is, is with us here today. Uh, and he spends a lot of time up in the Pretoria region as well as uh, in the Free State and, and going as far as Daha to, to visit some customers. Uh, Dan Kennedy, bottom right of your screen there, charming lady, very exciting new addition to our sales team, uh, who's brought on some lovely clients and, and doing very well promoting uh, to promoting the, uh, the batteries for us. Um, I think on the, on the side of the screen, which is slightly blocked, we've got uh, the lovely Tammy Kalil. Uh, she's our internal sales uh, agent. And when you phone in and you need any sales advice, uh, brochures or technical assistance, um, she's always there to help direct you to one of your sales reps or to answer the questions herself. So that's our exciting karting team. Katie, if we go down to the Western Cape, on the call with us today is, is Darby as well. Um, he's, he's probably uh, one of the best loved uh, battery people in, in the Western Cape. He really does the rounds. I see him on social media all the time. Have an absolute blast. Uh, always in his car, traveling to site, visiting people. The man with the big smile, Darby de Villiers. Thanks for joining us, doing very well in our region of Western Cape. And just some news while we're at it, is um, Darby and his team have opened up a, a new branch in, in, uh, in the Cape. Um, and we encourage all our Cape Town customers to pull in sometime, join them for a coffee and um, have a look at some of the uh, demos they've got going. It's, it's a really fun place to be. Uh, with them is obviously Taryn, uh, who's, who's man's the reception and also handles the phone calls and internal sales on that side. Um, and Bradley, another new uh, addition to our family, Bradley's uh, an external sales representative who spends a huge amount of time on the road visiting people and most importantly supporting the product out there. And um, if we go on, Katie, you can see uh, the guys in Zululand, in KwaZulu Natal, um, headed up by Stephen Smart, our regional manager based in Hilton. Uh, obviously, his email address isn't John at Revolve, it is Steve at, at Revolve. Uh, we should adjust that. And John, um, who supports him down there on the, on the coastal region, spending a lot of time visiting customers. Um, great to have you guys with us as well. Um, for all of those of you who, who would like to reach out to the Natal branch, these are the faces that are out there to help you. Um, Katie, we can move on. Hi everyone, welcome back and thanks for joining us for another one of our exciting product launches. My name is Dale, this is Warren, we're part of Revolve Technical. 
Why don't we have the cube in front of us? Can you tell us a little bit more about this cube? Um, our cube comes pre-configured or pre-wired. It comes with a 5K mass inverter with two R100s. Right. So you said it's for two R100s. Is there a sizable comparison over here? So yes, though you can get the cube with either one R100 or two. So that will allow you to be able to expand in the future. Great. And in terms of ins installation, so how does that go about? Yes, um, installation belt, so as I mentioned, it's all pre-configured. You've got your AC breakers, you've got a switch over breaker. So that will just, for the installation, you'll just bring AC in and an AC out, and that will be it. Sounds easy enough. And applications, where can we use these? Applications, because it's a nice, small 19-inch rack mount cabinet, it's compact, it allows you to put it under a counter, and yes, there's... That's fantastic. I see the inverter's got an LCD screen along with both the battery units. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yes. So the R100 has a intelligent built-in VMS. Um, it's all pre-configured. The VMS looks after each unit by itself. And also the inverter is pre-configured with all its voltages and obviously will look after the battery if things will be good. Great. That must make installation an absolute breeze. It does indeed. Dale, can you tell us about our 12 volt 8 volt battery? This is going to be the lithium standard for its lead counterpart. It's a 100 amp hour 12.8 volt unit comprised or enclosed in an ABS enclosure, complete with a built in BMS for self protection and maintenance. You obviously have your positive outs, negative outs, accompanied by a neat little 5 volt 2 amp USB charger. Yes. We're also going to be attaching a strap for ease of installation. And as you can see, it's a lot lighter than its lead counterparts. You mentioned the Bluetooth. Yes. So with every unit, they're going to be shipped with its how-to manual, all the guidance we provide in there. The app is downloadable, so you can view the, each cell's balance or each cell's voltage, accompanied by the overall voltage of the unit. I see this is a model number, and that's obviously where you'll be seeing which battery you connect to if you've got more than one. Correct. So, referring back to the manual that will be supplied, there's a series parallel configuration. So, should you require 12 or 24 volts or two banks of 24 volts, refer to your manual. The guidance is provided. All that you'll have to ensure is symmetry amongst all connecting cables and that each bank is fused accordingly. Perfect. Thanks. Pleasure. Downloading the BMS Bluetooth app. Scan the QR code to download the BMS app. Once downloaded, open the app and allow access to location. The app will show you the serial codes. Click the serial code for your battery. The Revolve 12 volt battery serial code can be found on the top of the battery. The app will then ask you for a password. The password is 123456. A pop-up will appear asking to use your GPS to test speed. Click yes. Your battery's dashboard will appear. You are now connected to your Revolve 12 volt battery via the BMS app, which allows you to view your battery's total voltage, remaining capacity, temperature, and time left until fully discharged. Hello everyone, I'm David de Villiers. I am the Regional Manager for Revolve Western Cape. And uh, yeah, I'll be taking you through our new product lines, which I'm very excited for. Next slide, please. Cool. Um, so in this presentation, I'll be taking you through our 12 volt, uh, 12 volt product overview, as well as some key features. Um, I'll explain some of the applications, um, and then I'll also presenting the cube, um, its overview, its key features, and as well as applications where the cube will excel. So are you looking for the perfect drop-in lead asset replacement battery? A battery which is lightweight, which is compact, and which is water and dust resistant. So we have introduced into the market the Revolve it's a 100 amp, 1.2 kilowatt hour uh, lead acid replacement lithium battery. 
Um, this battery is fantastic in the sense that you can literally drop it in where you're currently using your lead acid batteries. The voltages are also similar to lead acid, so there should be no need to change your charger, although we have noticed a great trend where um, a lot of chargers are now becoming lithium and lead acid compliant, especially Victron products, but also a lot of other products. Um, our batteries use uh, lithium iron phosphate technology. It's the safest of all the battery chemistries, um, which makes this battery ideal for um, off-grid applications, um, as well as using it in rugged uh, applications. So if you're gonna go off-road. Um, the BMS has an integrated battery management system. Uh, like I said before, it's lightweight and compact, and it's water and dust resistant uh, up to level IP56. Um, obviously, there's a USB port on it, so that can't get any water, but it does have a plug on top. Um, it is a drop-in replacement, as mentioned before, and the internal BMS has self-protecting and maintenance features, which means it will balance the cells as you charge the battery, charge and discharge. Um, the battery can be connected into series, so up to 24 volts, um, and it can be parallel from there up to a maximum of three sets currently. <coughs> um, there's also a Bluetooth app which you can use, and what's great about it is the Bluetooth app um, can be found on the Play Store um, in the manual with, that's with each and every battery. Uh, you'll also be able to download it from a scannable QR code. And the battery can be safely discharged to 90% DOD, um, which is a massive advantage over a similar lead acid battery, which typically can be discharged between 30 and 50%, depending on what chemistry you use. So we've got a lot more depth um, out of a battery like this, depth as in kilowatt hour capacity usable. Um, and then the battery must be recharged uh, after every cycle as well. Um, the USB connection um, is a 5 volt 2 amp uh, charging interface, which is more than sufficient to charge most cell phones, um, uh, iPads and small appliances like that. Um, some applications, uh, if you can just go to the next page where you can use these batteries. So 12 volt applications, uh, as in camping, um, the battery is quite light. So should be able to be carried around, especially for those longer camping sessions. Uh, the next page, um, obviously it's perfect for four by four, um, even in 24 volt applications. I know a lot of my friends who camp have 24 volt uh, inverters to 2000 or 3000 watts at 24 volt, which obviously um, would help you using thinner cables, which is fantastic for that. And we also know the rise in RV um, culture, um, people who take their campers and go camp next to the ocean, these batteries are absolutely perfect for that. And then in terms of 24 volt backup systems, um, it can be used in security applications, it can be used in small home and, and, and backup systems as in small UPSs, 12 and 24 volt. Um, I believe most Maser, oh, Maser Voltronic inverters, Victron inverters, all of them have um, systems compatible with this. So if we move on to our next product, which is the Revop Cube, um, we were designing a system that's a remarkable all-in-one backup system. It has seamless installation opportunities. It's pre-configured as a UPS. It's easy to store and it's neat and it's compact. So we introduced to you the Revop Cube, which is a 5 kVA inverter coupled with a 10.2 kilowatt hour battery. The batteries are made up of two R100 Revov 5.1 kilowatt hour second life batteries. Um, the whole system is uh, built into a 19 inch wrapped and cubed shape, uh, which allows for it to be installed under counter um, or any specific place where there's not a lot of space available. Um, the front glass door gives easy view and access for installation um, and allows your customer to see more information on their system performance. As mentioned before, it's pre-configured as a UPS. 
um, with optimal parameters, supplying backup to essential circuits in your home or your office or wherever you need backup power. The battery, um, both batteries are equipped with CAN bus and RS-485, um, which allows for the installer to e easily um, check parameters um, and uh, system performance, etc. But there should be no um, uh, settings or uh, installation further than just connecting it up on the installer side. So the installation time has greatly been reduced. Both uh, batteries will have an LCD display, which uh, gives information such as state of charge, um, as well as a charge indication. Um, the batteries are warranted for daily cycling with built-in protection for over-discharge, overcharge, um, as well as temperature, um, including short circuit protection. Um, the inverters are pure sign of the inverter is a pure sine wave output inverter, which is absolutely perfect for home and office use. And you can charge the system quite quickly from the grid or from solar with the included MPPT in the, in the inverter. The MPPT is a 80 amp, 150 volt DC input uh, MPPT, which would allow for up to four kilowatts worth of panels. Um, as I mentioned before, the cube is nice and compact. Um, it really can be installed anywhere where there is not a lot of space. Okay, and the warranty on the, on the, on the batteries um, are 10 years or three and a half thousand cycles at one cycle a day. And the warranty on the inverter um, depends on the brand used as similar in our star units. So it's usually one to two years, depending on the, on the model used. Okay, next slide, please. Um, applications where the cube will excel is residential or small business requiring backup power, call centers, um, you know, any security application, especially estates, if you want to run CCTV cameras, um, yeah, you can let your mind go when it comes to that. We also have uh, optional um, external monitoring by use of an XPI device, um, which we'll be happy to supply you with. And the whole product weighs um, approximately 120 to 125 kilograms, depending on what configuration we go with. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate the time to be able to present these products with you. Um, if you have any questions, please, please feel free to ask us. We're going to be going through some of the question and answers. So I'm going to go through our, our chat, and that's where you can leave your own questions. And I'll, I'll, I'll use uh, use that as a platform just to walk through it. Um, you won't hear me answering the questions, but I'll read them out to Dale, and Dale and I will discuss as we go through. Um, first question, interesting uh, question from Esla, who's a big supporter of our Revop Star on the market. And many of you will be familiar with the Revop Star being the, the more vertical version of the all-in-one kit. Um, and he wants to know what the differences are between the star and the cube. And yes, there are a few differences. Dale, shall we discuss those? Yeah, sure. Um, they both serve their purpose. They both have their place in the market. The star being more suited to uh, the cosmetically pleasing and uh, uh, domestic markets and the guys that you know, want to have something to look at. And your cube is more focused at an under-counter quick uh, install. Uh, Primarily at the guys, you know, running small businesses, something that just fits under the counter and is a very quick and easy install. There were two subtle differences, which I think are worth just mentioning um, on the star unit, which is the more vertical uh, configuration. Uh, we have a built-in XPI device, or, um, which is the, the Pi device to allow for external communications. Um, the other interesting thing with these star devices, we've made allowance for um, a variety of inverters to go in. So uh, we have a grow watch, but some people have used a, a SunSync 5 kilowatt in it as well. Um, so yes, it is it's adaptable to a few different types of inverters. You'll see that on our price list as well. So that's, that's where you'll see some differences. 
Um, the Revolv Cube really, I think, comes into its own as being an extremely compact unit, um, can fit in under a counter, uh, stands very low to the ground. And part of that is because of that amazing must inverter that we've got in there. Uh, it's a rack mounted inverter, keeps it very flat um, and uses a minimal space. Um, very, very nice design, I think. Um, Willem Steenkamp, thanks for that question, says, can the 12 volt battery be used directly in a vehicle on the same alternator as for a lead acid battery? Um, and can the 12 volt battery be used in light aircraft? Um, Dale, do you want to tell us a little bit about uh, the, what makes this battery different for, for a car battery? Uh, yes, thanks, John. This uh, 12 volt is not targeted at that mark just yet. Uh, there will be a possibility of bringing in variants that to cater to those markets at a later stage. Uh, currently, these will be lead replacements for static storage or your slightly more mobile units such as camping caravanning units. They can be charged off of an alternator. Uh, unfortunately, a as mentioned, it's not a direct replacement for your vehicle's battery. Okay, okay, thanks. Um, yes, so so, um, so that's that's interesting. So a 12 volt battery, uh, not really used to, to go into a vehicle as a starter motor, but uh, to start your motor from, from it, but it is ideal for camping, camping applications um, and, and those types of activities um, would be very good. And what makes the 12 volt battery even more appealing, I think, to a lot of those outdoor enthusiasts is the little USB port that it comes with, means so you can plug in all sorts of devices um, and get that little bit of extra charge on your iPad or, or cell phone during the day. Okay, um, we were, we've been asked by ESIP, uh, do you supply a charger for the 12 volt battery? Um, and do you have uh, any recommended charges for the 12 volt batteries? Yeah, any answers to that? Uh, yes, you can use a variety of uh, lithium compatible 12 volt triple chargers. Uh, obviously, as um, the market grows, there will be preferred chargers, which we will then compile a list of and make available. So, maybe what that means is. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks. Anton de Swartz, thank you very much. Anton's a great supporter of our product range and, and we appreciate that. Anton wants to know something uh, very important and is it is it possible to install four 12 volt batteries in series for an existing gel or AGM 48 bank installation? I think that that question is going to qualify you to win one of these devices Anton. So I'm holding up the, uh, the Revolve uh, uh, Solar charge a bank here for you because I think that's a great one. And we'd probably like to elaborate more on that question and, and go through the configuration of the battery in, in terms of how many can be paralleled and how many can be put in series. So Del, do you want to just take us through that? Yes, sure. Um, so currently at the moment, we're going to allow for 24 volt configuration paralleled up to three sets of 24. There will be 48 volts uh, configuration at a later stage. As it stands, it's just 24. Uh, it's nothing to do with the limitations of the product. It's just to get the guys to a more aware state of, uh, to make the systems capable of this provision at this stage. Okay, all right, Dale. So if we, just to reiterate that, uh, yeah, the 12 volt battery configuration that we recommend is no more than 24 volts. Uh, in, in other words, two batteries in series. And then that, that configuration can be paralleled three times. So it's, that will take us up to a total of six batteries in a bank at a 24 volts um, level. So, so that's, that's, that's where we'd like to keep it. Um, going beyond that, uh, not recommended. Correct. Great, thanks for clarifying. All right, um, all right. the next question um, from Eugene. Um, is it a dual purpose battery? Do you know what that means, Dale? <laughs> I'm trying to work out, but uh, I would say yes, uh, you can use the thing as a static storage, or sorry, the thing. you may use the product as a, a static storage uh, battery, so for your standard 12 or 24 volt um, smaller backup systems, or you could use it for traveling about, you know, for those little fishing weekends, out camping with the family. I think maybe what, what could have, um, Eugene might have meant by that is, can it be used in a, in a vehicle as a uh, starter, in, in which case, going back to an earlier question on that, uh, it, it wouldn't be used for that purpose, but definitely for storage applications, ideal. Eugene, um, we haven't answered your question, please feel free to, to uh, type something more at the bottom. Um, Esa wants to know, is this battery available immediately? 
Esip, if you place an order with me today, you can have one tomorrow. <laughs> yes, we do have stock available. Um, and yes, the batteries are available immediately. Great. Uh, moving over to Anton de Swartz, uh, question over here. What is the C rating of the 12 volt battery? Uh, talking to John's point, it will be a 0.7 C max discharge rated battery. So 100 amp hours aligned with 70 amps match draw in the given time. Mm. Okay, and here yeah, Willem's brought us a question on the cube, wondering if uh, if that uh, inverter, which is currently the must inverter, rack mounted five kilowatt uh, inverter, whether it can be changed to a Victron. Current status, we're going to be supplying the must. There will be a later variant which will make provision for, say, the Victron or ideally a sunset, whichever the uh, installer prefers at that point. I think what what uh, what the point really is with the cube, the Willem, is we've we've uh, made it a, an application that is completely assembled, ready to go um, with the must, and and the must is is given the format uh, of a rack mounted inverter like that, fits in very snugly into this format, um, um, you, you know, so that space is is the key consideration as to what what else we could put in there. Okay, uh, from uh, Rian Haman. Uh, regarding the cube, can you add more than two batteries to the setup and how will the BMS setup be? Also, is the inverter PB ready or is it only for backup? And Rian, I love that question. So we're going to throw in a Revolve battery for you for that one. Thank you. We can definitely arrange to have that sent to you. Thanks for that great question. Um, I'm buying some time as, uh, <laughs> as, uh, as, as my colleague here, Dale, figures out the appropriate response to that last question. Okay, uh, to answer your question, Rian, uh, the cube's going to be available in one of two variants, either a 100 or a 200 amp hour uh, unit. Yeah, should you require anything further, I definitely advise the expansion of the unit. Uh, it's usually speaking to the point where not so many sites do require the expansion of the backup, it's usually the expansion of the power and the backup. So on that point, uh, we've given it two variants off the shelf, which is the 100 and 200, as mentioned. And uh, moving over that, uh, it will be a secondary view as they are parallel. Okay, and then going into the next part of that question, um, is this PV ready, this inverter? And, and I suppose, what is the, the volts rating on it? Yes, uh, <laughs> very talking to that side of it. Uh, as Darby mentioned uh, in our launch, it's going to be 150 volts, 80 amp, the MPPT is built into the unit. So it will provide ample power, uh, should it be a domestic application. It is PV ready, so it will have uh, a PV breaking incorporated. Nice. As to the external requirements, this is obviously dependent on the area that it goes into, and it will be up to the installer to obviously uh, supply it and install the accompanying infusing and so our protections with it. Uh, it's purely, we're not too sure which, which area they will be going to. Well, Dale, I love what you say about incorporating a breaker for PV into this one. It certainly was a question with our first version of the Revolt Star, and I know it's been incorporated in future design plans. So, so we've, we've got that going into this cube. That really does help a lot for people looking at PV. So super exciting. Is the cube stable to use on servers? Yes, it is. Uh, it's, I would say, purpose built for something that suits to this application. Uh, you ideally just need to run your uh, protected circuits or your dedicated circuit to uh, from the cube. Um, it's also, you know, as seen in the pictures, in a stunning um, rack. So it won't be an eyesore in your server room as well, at all. And as mentioned as well, it's a pure sine wave. So to be attaching to all of your delicate electronics, there won't be any harm on that side. Uh, Fox ele Electrical, oh, hang on, I, I missed one. Is, is um, uh, Anton de Swart, is the inverted choices, what are the inverted choices on the cube? Right now, no no real choices. It's it's how it comes right now, Anton. Uh, but but um, I think as, as Dale has said, we might consider that in, in future. Um, on the Revolve Star, the other product, uh, obviously there, there are some options on that SunSync, um, uh, GrowWatt, uh, Vectron even. So, so chat to us about that if you're interested. 
Uh, Fox Electrical and Plumbing uh, from Irma. Thank you, Irma, for the question. What is the most cycles do you get from a second life battery? Does the voltage stay the same? And when the battery reaches 80% of its lifespan, what is the difference in performance and losing voltage much quicker? Um, all right, Irma, that, that's a good question. I really like that. Is it worthy of a prize? Uh, I think it just may be. You want to give a prize, Irma? Um, well, I'll answer a question first. <laughs> all right, I'll answer okay. this first. Okay. I'm talking to the first time this. Uh, it's very, I wouldn't say difficult, but depending on the usage of the, the batteries and the storage application, uh, that would give you a more definitive answer as to the lifespan. Uh, as we mentioned, we warrant for one cycle per day for 10 years. Uh, on the second side of that, uh, once it's reached that uh, warranted lifespan, uh, you mentioned 80%. Uh, as uh, mentioned in the first side of this, it's very, very hard to plot, but from projections and what we've seen, you're looking at anything between 60 to 80, sometimes even 90% uh, of its rated capacity uh, remaining for usability and moving past that warranted uh, lifespan. Mm -hmm. Your voltages will still stay the same. Uh, all the operating parameters, they remain in place. Um, and I hope that answers your question. Um, Irma, I think I think so much goes on in the background uh, with the electronics within the BMS to manage and maintain these batteries. Um, but but um, I just thought I'd add into that there, there are two points. One is obviously the the the, um, the lifespan of these batteries is extremely long. Um, being second life batteries, we've obviously had a little bit of use of those batteries beforehand, which is how we achieve. Um, having uh, such great pricing on a premium uh, electric vehicle grade of battery that's, that we're supplying on the market. Um, but the design life that we, that we um, talk about in the office is a 7,000 cycle design life on these batteries. That means that we expect 7,000 cycles going out of these batteries. Um, yes, there's a warranty though, that's 3,500 cycles, which is half of that. Uh, but, but absolutely, we expect a long life after the, the warranty conditions. Um, and if you think about that as a cycle a day, that's well over 10 years where you'll be able to use this battery if you're cycling on a daily basis. And if you're not cycling daily and maybe using this as just a backup application, as a lot of people do, uh, we're looking even longer. So particularly I'm talking about the Q battery, that which has um, our, our, our wonderful R100 batteries, which has become a very big seller for us right now. Okay, should we move on to another question? Um, oh, well, oh, okay. I've noticed we're getting lots and lots of questions, but Willem has asked again, what is the temperature range of the 12 volt battery? All right, uh, that will be your typical lithium operating temperature range. So discharging up to minus 10 degrees or down to minus 10 degrees uh, all the way up to about 45 degrees celsius uh, your charging is obviously from zero to five degrees celsius all the way up to 55 degrees celsius so well within our ambient temperature ranges of our country um Willem, i think we can add to that we, we are able to provide uh, people who are interested with uh, the degradation of the battery capacity at different temperatures uh, particularly when you're at those extremes um, I personally wouldn't recommend uh, operating at the extremes that the battery is able to function at uh, because you, you do lose a little bit of capacity and, and so we've got some liter literature on that. Um, I think sensible installation should be kept um, within ambient temperatures and, and where you are at risk of going very high in temperatures uh, to try and avoid that at, at uh, whatever way you can. If it's unavoidable, obviously you, you do have quite a wide temperature window of operation, but, but you are losing performance um, as you creep into those higher ranges. Okay, great. So Corey Ludic uh, to everyone, great option for entry level users with limited budgets. Yes, nice comment. I think Corey, uh, particularly this 12 volts is incredible. And one of the options that we've been looking at that I think appeals to people reselling and installing this product is to take the 12 volt battery and put it in um, a 24 volt configuration uh, you can get uh, 24 volts, 100 amp hours, that's two and a half kilowatt hours and a small little three kilowatt inverter of the market, ending up with a product that's going to be um, available to the market for under 20,000 rand. Uh, incredible value for money there, I think, Dale, for an entry level um, 
application. I couldn't agree with you more. Thanks for that, Ori. Okay. Moving over to Rio Hammond, uh, regarding the total of battery, can you change discharge voltages of the battery in the BMS? Also, how the BMS set up the, when linking the batteries with more than one battery, would it sync up or manage the batteries separate with their own BMS? Uh, starting with the first half uh, of your question, Maria, um, we are fixing the operating voltages of the unit. Uh, this is obviously just to safeguard the industry, the product, you know, and the usability. Uh, we don't want uh, you know, unfortunate events where something may have happened, uh, something was tampered with, or anything like that. So it will be a fixed operating voltage, uh, firstly. Um, secondly, it's a little bit quiet. Okay. <laughs> um, when you, well, sorry, when you'd like to pair more than one, so talking to the 24 volt, you can. Sorry, this is uh, <laughs> a little bit of tongue tied. Um, the documentation is supplied with each unit. Uh, uh, if this uh, recording doesn't reach anyone, uh, of how to you know, pair the voltages of each unit individually. So, what would be required would be the separate 12 volt units going up uh, parallel to, I'm uh, sorry, series to 24, and then onto their respective bus bus, the positive and negative. And you can leave the batteries alone for about a 12 to 24 hour period, at which point the voltages will unlock. Thereafter, you're more than happy to use them uh, through their discharge parameters. And on that regard, the batteries will sync up. Okay, I see we've got a question again about the boats. Um, uh, Issa wants to know if he's got a 12, many customers with uh, boats. Uh, interested to use the 12 volts um, to replace four boats. What do you think about that question? It would be difficult to say, but I would say on this one, let's leave it at this is a storage design uh, unit for the moment. Uh, there will be starter variants available at a later stage. So, unfortunately, I wouldn't recommend marketing this one to the boating or vehicle market at this point. Yeah, and again, SF, I think that's all about what is the maximum discharge amperage or the recommended amps that would flow out of this battery. Uh, there's a BMS in the battery that protects it and, and regulates the number of uh, or the amount of current that can go out um, and that limits the amount of current. And if your boat is drawing a higher current to start to crank that motor, then um, then you might have a um, you might have an issue there. Uh, certainly the boats that need uh, the entertainment systems powered, lights, music, I don't know how big this boat is, but all those those fun things, um, yes, have no problem. I mean, it can run run those those things in the background. And so your boat might, uh, like in camping, be fitted to some bridge equipment um, and some, some entertainment, radio, TV, DSTV, no problem, we can do that. Okay, can one use a standard 12 volt trickle charger on the battery? Uh, Chris, great question. Uh, a lot of guys have these chargers present, you know, in their usual DIY kits. Um, as we touched on in one of the initial questions, you can use a 12 volt trickle charger provided it has a lithium profile incorporated into its algorithms. Uh, if not, I would not recommend it. Uh, usually the 12 volt charge is at a slightly higher voltage. So, you know, purely around those reasons, I would not do it. Uh, please, if you're having a look for it, try and find one with a lithium profile in there. Okay. Uh, will these come as the, with standard MPPTs or will they be optional? Standard? Optional. Okay. For depending on which one we're talking about. Oh, are we yeah. talking about the cube, I presume? Yes. yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Good. Excellent. <laughs> For the cube, yes, the MPPT is built in. Uh, PV ready. Correct. Uh, you will, as mentioned before, you will be required uh, just to do the standard configuration and protection of your PV panels that will be feeding the charger. The charger is protected with, um, excuse me, is protected with a DC breaker, mm -hmm. uh, which is, comes inside the cabinet. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So not optional, it shall be a standard. Good, good. And it's really great that we've incorporated that breaker into, into the kit, all included in the same price. Okay, good. All right, Neil, tell me, 
a toll box, 100 amperes, what is the cycle life warranty, what is the discharge current max, uh, and continues, and what is the max charge current carry? QB parallels or three phase and how many? Okay, why don't we start on the warranty? Okay, for 12 three volts. Years. 2000 12 cycle. volts? Yes, it's going to be a three year 2000 cycle warranty on the 12 volts. Uh, your max discharge current per 12 volts is about 70 amps. Uh, this is all good. covered in the documentation supply as well. Good, good. Uh, moving to the cube and parallel or three phase, mm -hmm. yes. They can be paralleled and they can be set up for three phase configuration. Uh, with paralleled, it's going to be up to six <coughs> units. Uh, with three phase, it's going to be sticking at three units, so one per phase at this point. Okay, okay. We've got uh, two more of these uh, devices to give away. Dale, I'm going to put it in your hands. You tell me when we're going to give those away because I gave away the first few. All right. I think Neil definitely gets one. Get really? Going back to Fox Electrical. That lovely question. So we have one more. Oh, really? Good. Goodness, what well, here you go. has what temperature range can the power bulbs have? I think we covered hit that. Yes, we do. Okay, good, 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 good. Um, get an umbrella for those batteries there. <laughs> <laughs> um Tindondela to everyone. Will there be any special settings required? Uh, to answer your question there, Tindondela, the all of the charge, um, excuse me, all of the charge voltages will be supplied in the documentation. They follow a standard uh, lithium charge profile. Obviously, it being 24 volts or 12 volts, they will you know, obviously be supplied accordingly. Okay. Um, Mike has asked us, uh, Ari, the cube, do the batteries communicate with the must inverter using the RS485 or canvas? Um, or is it set equivalent to user mode? Uh, talking to Mike's question over here, the cube is going to be configured on a voltage basis. Hmm. That comes with the battery, we have deemed not necessary, purely down to simplicity of the unit. Uh, what we would like to offer the clientele that this is appealing to is a very robust, Piece of equipment that is going to deliver. Uh, trying to eliminate you know, sort of possible areas where something could go wrong, sort of a snag on a cable, anything like that. So at this point, there will be no communications between the inverter and the batteries. And um, uh, Dale, perhaps um, is that something that can be changed and installer that wanted to incorporate the RS485 cable or? Um, was that available on this um, type of device? Uh, I see absolutely no reason why not. Later variants. Uh, having the communications over there is always a bonus for end users to view it via online portals. Uh, as mentioned by Darby, the monitoring of this uh, device will be incorporated into the AXPI range. Uh, which will offer you those capabilities. Okay, great. So, Mike, yes, the, the, the R100 battery that you find inside the cube does come with the canvas uh, and all RS485 ports uh, that communicate information to inverters. Um, so, yes, uh, I think there's absolutely no reason why you can't um, um, look at how you could use our batteries with different inverters and, and um, engage that sort of level of communication if that's what you're looking for. Um, I really like your point though, Dale. We've gone for a simple installation here. The cube is very robust, being connected in a way that uh, works very well in a robust sort of way. And, and, and we're happy with those settings to get a lot of uh, discharge. Um, and, and as always, great value for money. Great. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Um, Anton Deswart, uh, are the Revov team aware that there is a Sunsync 8 kilowatt rack mounted version available? Um, well, um, we are now. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm giving the Sunsync range a little pat there. We love Sunsync because the communication and integration uh, with our batteries in Sunkin is, Sunsync is, is really excellent. I've seen that going very well for a lot of installers. But um, yeah, anything else you want to add to that? Not too much. Thanks for making us aware of that, Anton. Yeah. Um, okay, Gary uh, Uber uh, mentioning are there any concerns? Are the cooling on the cube since it's so compact? 
Why don't we talk about the ventilation capabilities in that cube? Is there adequate ventilation? Yes. So obviously ventilation was one of the primary concerns uh, in the initial design process of this unit. Uh, we wanted to eliminate a lot of the moving parts that could potentially, not sort of say go wrong, but you know, give you issues down the line. So a lot of it is around thermal cooling and its natural ventilation. There will be, or there is, um, slatted vents on the sides on both bottom and top. So your conventional five to 15 millimeters gap on either side to prevent those um, vents from being blocked is sufficient and the cooling will take care of itself and there are not. Okay, okay. Um, Esther asking for the uh, recommended charges for the 12 volt batteries. Uh, as mentioned in one of the initial first questions, these will obviously grow as the demand grows with it. Your standard 12 volt triple charger with a lithium uh, profile that can be modified based on voltages will suffice at this point. Easily available these days. Correct. Fantastic. Yeah, good. Okay, and um, uh, Rian Haman, uh, 12 volt battery. What are the chances of having Wi Fi connectivity for the BMS instead of Bluetooth? This will allow for remote monitoring without adding additional modules to the setup. What are your thoughts on that one? I don't see why not in future variants. As it stands, it's a Bluetooth, uh, well, as you stated, it's Bluetooth connectivity. Uh, this was all accompanying the idea that the user will be nearby. Uh, yes, as mentioned, it might. Like, um, remote monitoring should it be in a static storage the other side of that is most of your inverters uh, the brands out there at the moment with your static storage so your backup systems they already have the uh, remote viewing exactly. capability exactly. so based on the voltage uh, i'm pretty sure most of the guys that have these systems out there operating will already have those systems um, incorporated into their households yeah all right okay um, uh, just, just a question about our technical support number. Absolutely, we do have a technical support number. Um, you can call the office on um, 010 035 6061 at any time. Uh, speak to us here. Uh, there is a dedicated technical support number on our website, uh, which works beautifully. If you've got any questions or would like some support with any installation, uh, you can uh, immediately log an issue. Uh, you get assigned a ticket and within um, a very short space of time, someone will be on the line to help you with, with what you need. Um, that is uh, potentially for, for well, ideally for installers, uh, the person who's installed the equipment, because we do get quite technical on those calls. Um, the question is, is that for end users as well? And yes, if an end user calls and is having difficulty uh, with an installation and they can't reach the installer as their first point of reference, uh, we're always there to help um, and probably direct them to an installer in the area uh, that can also help them with that issue. Okay, I have a feeling that we've got to the end of the questions. Um, obviously, if anyone has anything else, uh, type away. I've got some more time, but uh, uh, otherwise, I think we're going to be signing off quite soon. We'll make this video available for people. Ah, oh, here's one more question. Ah, thank you, guys. So glad that Charlie came to see us. Yes, uh, uh, Costa, it's a pleasure. Charlie loves seeing her clients. She's on the call now listening to you, and I'm very happy for that compliment. Thank you very much for that. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Um, really fantastic range of products. Dale, thank you for giving us those uh, good technical answers. Uh, we always here for everyone to call, comment, contact. If you'd like a salesperson to come and see you and, and take you through the product, or if you want to visit one of our branches, whether that's uh, visiting Derby in Cape Town, uh, Steve in KZN, or, or ourselves here in, in, in Joburg, please give us a call, drop us an email, speak to any one of your reps. Uh, we'd love to see you. Fridays is normally quite a quite a festive time. We often have people coming over for information sessions uh, to have a quick cup of tea um, or a bourgeois roll at the end of the day. Um, we'd love to see you. We're a warm family and we appreciate each one of you um, as our agents and installers in the market. Really wonderful to have you with us. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks a lot, guys.